I'm a big fan of silent cooling on a Raspberry Pi. This is the Phineas case from DeSalvo Systems, which fits a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, with this sort of case, it has to be modeled for the exact model of Pi. And we don't really have very many options on the Raspberry Pi 5 at this stage. Uh, well, until now. So Edetech have sent me two different cases. Now there's four boxes here because each case is in black and silver but both of these are silently called options and they're both a little bit different. So let's open up the boxes. So we have an enclosed case and I'm gonna open the black one of these, or that's the silver one. And the open case, I'm gonna open the silver one, which is that one. So two different designs, both with a base plate with little rubber feet on them as well. But this one is designed to be more enclosed. So when the Pi is in it, very little is exposed, apart from things like the GPIO pins, uh, the PCIe, so if you're gonna add an NVMe drive, uh, the camera stroke display slots are open, the ethernet port, uh, and this is just the bits that, well, aren't really exposed on a Pi because these are the tops of the ethernet and the USB sockets. But this one is more open. So I'm guessing this in, this is going to be more effective at cooling uh, because it has uh, a similar amount of aluminium involved in it. But because the sides are all open, uh, it's, I would imagine it's going to be more effective. But I'm going to put both of them on together doing the same thing. But first of all, I'm going to compare this one to a Pi that has no active cooling. So I'm going to take off my 52 Pi Ice Tower cooler uh, because what I want to compare is the two 8 gig Pi 5s that I've got. So let's take this off. There we go, that comes off pretty easily. And the fan. And there isn't much to it. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. You can see there's already thermal pads in the right place. Uh, we've got some Allen key bolts here and an Allen key. So let's pull that bit off. This is just a bit of packing for traveling. A thermal pad, big, huge thermal pad on the base that it just sits on. So it's going to be this way around. I've still got an SD card in there. Yeah, so that obviously sits in nicely. And if I try and pick that up, oh yeah, it comes up fine. Oh, it's not sticky. So I like that. I like the fact that it's not going to stick to it. And then we're just going to peel this one off. And these are sticky. And just place that on the top. And then these four Allen key bolts. And if you hold it down, you can see you can squeeze it with the pads uh, and then tighten it up. And you can't over tighten because the case obviously stops it from going too tight. And it just feels like a solid piece of equipment now. It doesn't feel exposed at all doesn't feel like you would be able to break it very easily so if you're using this in an industrial environment uh, or just somewhere very dusty or something like that then obviously most of the key components have got a lot of cover a lot of protection yeah i really like that but it also is very low profile as well we also have this little perspex window which i wonder what it was at first it's for the wi-fi because obviously uh, aluminium is going to block the Wi-Fi uh, quite badly and this little window is so that the Wi-Fi can still work. But the SD card looks still accessible. Let's pop one in just to see how easy that, yeah, that goes in fine. And you can also still get it out with your thumbnail. So that's no problem. Yeah, it does. I really like it. Really nice design. And let's see what it weighs. So... 209 grams compared to just the Pi on its own is 45 grams. So you can feel it's, it's more than four times the weight and it just feels really solid. So let's plug it in and switch on. It's pretty discreet, but you can make out the little LED light through the little window here. Now this was the OS from my VNC video yesterday. Actually, what I wanted to do is boot it from SSD uh, only because I'm going to run both operating systems on SSD and just do some comparisons. So let's plug this one in. And let's plug my Bear Pi in SSD drive. And I'm going to need a mouse and keyboard. And let's switch that one on as well. 
And first of all, I'm going to just start up P Sensor on both of them and also start playing a video and just leave it for 20 minutes or so and just show what it does. I've literally just switched them on and we've got 35 degrees on the Bear Pi and the one in the EDETEC case is 26 degrees. So already uh, it's, it's doing really well. Nice thing about P-Sensor is it tells you the max temperature it got up to, so 28 degrees. And you can see here we've got 39 degrees on the Bear Pi on its own. The Bear Pi is, is safe uh, because what it will do is thermal throttle. So when it gets too hot, it will thermal throttle. So there's nothing to worry about. Uh, but obviously it's nicer to keep it cooler if you can. So let's launch Chromium at the same time. So they're on exactly the same sort of test. And that started very similarly. Let's go for YouTube on both of them. So both are set to 108060, so let's play them at the same time and just leave them going for 20 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. Good morning, Lee. 20 minutes, starting now. Okay, so it's just over a minute into the video and you can see we're at 67, 68 degrees uh, on the Pi with no cooling at all. And when we go to the one in the EDETEC case, 35 degrees. That is, that's really impressive. It is uh, obviously making a huge difference. And if I touch it, yeah, it feels ever so slightly warm. Well, I'm not gonna touch that. because <laughs> that's 70 degrees now. Okay, so it's all done. Let's have a look. So on the Bear Pi, it did get to 85 degrees. In fact, it's currently at 84 degrees, so not keeping itself very cool at all. And on the EDATEC, we've got a maximum of 50 degrees, uh, and it's currently at 49, 50 degrees. That's very impressive. So I think I'm gonna put this Pi in the other EDATEC case, let them cool down for half an hour and see which one keeps the coolest. Oh, and I also realized I didn't put this button in, which is the power button. So I'm gonna take this apart and put that button in. So let's shut them all down. So let's just pop the button in here. There we go. And pop the pie back in place and tighten it back up again. Yeah, and it feels really nice. Nicer to use than the normal button because obviously it's uh, on the outside here. So they've gone for the same sort of design with the big thermal pad on the base. And then obviously the pie's just gonna sit on there and then pull this off. And it's got some plastic spaces on here so you can't tighten it too hard. So we need to line this up with the display ports. So if I sandwich it together, just like the other one, it finds its way in. Okay, so we've got a nice sort of serrated base on it. Again, the rubber feet uh, makes it nice and stable. Uh, we've also got all these things exposed as well. The SD card slot doesn't need anything and nor does the button because obviously they're all exposed to the outsides. So it's all about cooling. So it looks nice. I still like the look of this. I just, I just really like the clean lines and everything of it. But uh, I understand why they've done the serrated to try and aid the cooling. So it'll be interesting to see which one fares the best. Let's weigh it. 165 so quite a bit lighter but that's because it hasn't got all these enclosed bits and everything is exposed okay that should be long enough for them both to be at room temperature now so let's switch them both on okay so the open case is currently at 30 degrees and you can see the maximum it's been is 30 degrees the closed case is currently at 39 degrees and that's the maximum temperature it's been. So I'm gonna leave them for 10 minutes and see what happens anyway. So after more than 10 minutes, the open case has been at a maximum of 43 degrees and it's currently at 42. And the closed case is currently at 47 and that's the highest it's been. So let's run the test, um, but they're closer together now, um, but it will be interesting to see what they're like under pressure. So this time I'm going to run this test for an hour. This is an hour and a half video, an old FIFA one of mine. And let's see what happens. So it's only just started, but the temperature's got to be very similar now. So you can see 46, 47 degrees, maximum of 49. 49 degrees, maximum of 49. So at the moment they're very, very similar. 
Uh, and I'm not sure, I didn't have the Ethernet cable plugged into this one when I was leaving them idle. And I'm not sure if that would have made any difference. I wouldn't have thought so. But uh, yeah, they're at a very similar temperature at the moment, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so it's an hour later and the open case has got to a maximum of 63 degrees, currently at 61. And the closed case has got to a maximum of 61 degrees, so it's, uh, and it's currently 60, 61, so same temperature. But uh, it's actually stayed cooler. And if we have a look at the other temperature monitor, so 58 degrees on the other one below, that's the max temperature. And then on this one, it's got a 61. So actually, the closed case has ever so slightly fared better in this test. Now, that could be down to this being my original pre-release Pi, which definitely doesn't overclock as well, but at stock temperatures, I haven't really noticed any difference, but it could be that it gets hotter. It's not as effective uh, as this one, which was one that I bought. But uh, yeah, both cases have actually been very good and I'm really impressed with them. So silent cooling is definitely good enough for a Raspberry Pi 5. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.